In this example, we are going to use all three different methods. Um, they're kind of non-calculator to solve this. So we are going to be looking at um, graphing it, and then we are going to use solve this by substitution, and we're going to next solve this by elimination. And we'll kind of talk as we do the substitution and elimination, like when should you use substitution, when should you use elimination, because it is there's kind of situational. There's a time that substitution is a great method, and there's times that elimination is a great method, and then there are times that substitution I would never use, and there's times that I would not use elimination. Um, but in the end, these are going to be more efficient, and graphing is going to be kind of one of the most inefficient ways of doing it. Um, the problem with graphing is you're about to graph two lines, and so the two potential weaknesses to this is you're looking for where lines cross. Well, who's to say that they cross in a nice area? These lines may cross somewhere way, way off the graph. How big of a graph are you willing to do to find where they cross? And then your other problem is you're assuming that these lines cross at a nice point. So if they cross somewhere in, in space, then well, how good is your guessing ability? So graphing is a good visual, but it's really not the best method to use. So it doesn't happen too often, but it is good. I always talk about what would the graph mean, whatever, depending upon the answer that you get. Um, so I do tie in some sort of a graph. I just don't graph it to do it. So, um, so here we are. We have our two equations. If we're going to graph this, we need to get them ready to graph. So x minus y equals 5, and then 2x plus y equals 1. So we're going to get these two in a graphing form, so we're looking to do y equals mx plus b, because they're linears. So uh, two things we're going to do to get this thing ready to graph. We're going to subtract the x over. We'll have a negative y equaling a negative x plus 5. Divide everything by negative 1. So y equals x minus 5. All right. So we'll graph that one. This graph's going to go up. Have a y intercept at negative 5. Um, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And then it has a slope of 1. So I'm going to put as many points as I can actually because I don't know where these lines are going to cross. So there we go. It's plenty. Okay, so there's our first graph. And then our second graph is we got to get this thing ready to graph. So we're going to subtract the 2x over to the other side. So y equals negative 2x plus 1. So y-intercept of 1. And we're going to go down 2 over 1, down 2 over 1, down 2 over 1. Okay, so we've already crossed. All right, so that is where our solution is. So our solution to this is 2, negative 3. And then um, we'll classify this too. It has a solution, so it's consistent. It has one solution, so they are independent of each other. Okay. So, um, so let's use substitution. So substitution, I would use um, if uh, one variable is easy to get by itself. So if there's one variable that's easy to get by itself, I would use substitution. So, um, and it really doesn't matter. So here are your two equations. Let's say we gave, uh, we'll take that x and get it by itself. It would be just as easy to get that y by itself. So we'll pretend like we didn't do this and we're just kind of starting from scratch. So let's say we take the x minus y equals five and we'll get that y value or the x value by itself. So we're gonna bump over the y. So we're gonna take x minus y equals 5. We're going to shift the y over. So that becomes x is going to equal um, y plus 5. All right, so what we do is here's our second equation. 
we know what x equals. So if we know what x equals, we can substitute that in for right there. So we would, instead of it being x, it's going to be y plus 5, because that's what x equals. So that's the idea of substitution. It's called substitution because we're going to substitute one of the variables um, with a value because we know what the value is. So now we can do the math here. So we'll distribute. So 2y plus 10 plus y equals 1. We have like terms. Um, so we'll have a 3y plus 10 equals 1. We'll subtract our 10. We have 3y equaling negative 9 out of that, divide by 3, y is going to get us negative 3. And then, once we know y, we're going to plug y back into any of these, maybe this one, because that already has x by itself. So we'll plug the y in and replace the y with negative 3 plus 5, so our x value is 2. So our solution is 2 negative 3. Now I know we already knew that, but um, the idea is that I wouldn't have done the graph, and so I just would have done the substitution, gotten my solution, so I would know that that's where the lines cross if I were to graph them. Elimination. Last one. So um, we kind of use it if, um, if your like terms are lined up. Now if they're not, you can make that happen. But this ends up being the method probably most people choose on most of the problems. So you're looking at x minus y equaling 5 and 2x plus y equals 1. So everything's wonderfully lined up. You got your x's lined up, you got your y's lined up, and you got your constants lined up. So um, we're actually just going to combine the equations. And so this problem doesn't do a great job of really showing you how you have to use elimination because you're just combining your like terms, but your goal is to eliminate a variable. Well, the y's already eliminate when you add them together. Well, uh, that's not normal, and so we'll have some other examples of how do we deal with it when it's not. But right now, you combine that, your y's go away, and you have 3x equaling 6. Divide by 3, x equals 2. So then we go back to either of the two equations. Top one looks a little bit gentler. And so instead of x, we plug in 2. Minus our y equals 5. And then we subtract 2. Negative y equals 3. Divide by negative 1. y equals negative 3. So our solution would be 2, negative 3. So that is all three different methods solving that one problem. Um, and then at some point, uh, hopefully the directions don't force you to use a certain method. You can use whatever you want. So some of you may like substitution on certain problems. Some of you may like elimination. Um, and again, graphing has its limitations, so I don't feel like I would jump into that right away. I would be trying to use substitution or elimination. Um, but at the end of the day, these methods don't matter, but there are going to be times that substitution is definitely a far more challenging problem. And then there's times that it's wonderfully set up for it, so I wouldn't even bother with elimination. But the majority of the time, you'll probably use, I use it as well, uh, elimination. And so we'll do some more examples showing you some more challenging and different situations with these.